I'm going to take a wild guess that many of you who watch these videos probably find the art of making attachments for your robot a mystery. I am going to demystify this process by talking through my three steps to make any attachment in FL. We first need to make the manipulator, which is what the robot will use to score points. For this task, we're going to push the audience members to the movie theater next to the West launch area. I will talk about how to decide what ideas to go with in a later video. But for this video, we're going to make a plow which will push the audience members to the launch area. In this first attempt of making the plow, there are some improvements we need to make. Specifically, that when we push the audience members, they get spread out too wide and some of them don't actually end up completely in the movie theater. So our improvement is we're going to make the plow more narrow and try again. So the plow is actually narrow enough now that the audience members don't spread out too much. But there really isn't enough room to securely hold all the audience members. And so my solution is we make the blue arms on the side of the plow longer, which would drastically increase the amount of space that the audience members have inside the mechanism. The arms could be longer, but this will be good enough. Now we have a manipulator. Manipulators don't have to be complicated. This one only used seven parts in total. But we now need to find a way to attach this to the robot. The bridge is the connection between the robot and the manipulator. So, let's build a bridge. That way the robot can actually use it. I'm going to start with a mistake many teams do, and it's make a bridge that is too strong and too well attached to the robot. This kind of bridge is a problem because it can be difficult to put it on and take it off of the robot. That last example was an exaggeration. Let's do a somewhat more reasonable attachment system. This one is much better, but it still leaves parts behind on the robot when you need to change over from this attachment. Attachments should not leave behind stuff on the robot because this stuff can get in the way of you making other attachments or the robot's path or whatever. Alright, I would argue the first two methods you saw were too secure. Let's make a bridge that is slightly less secure with the idea that it's going to be easier to put it on and take it off of the robot. So this is a huge improvement, and I think a lot of teams would stop here. But who said that the attachment needs to stay on the robot after it's done its task. I think that the plow should be left at the movie theater, saving valuable seconds by not needing your team to take this attachment off of the robot, as the robot does it by itself with no extra time. But wait! We haven't talked about motorized attachments. Well... Now there's a third step involved, and we're going to do another task. We're going to tackle the light show task, and we're going to have already built the bridge and made the manipulator. The control is how the robot will move the manipulator, and 90% of the time, in this case, it's how a motor will power the mechanism that is the manipulator. And in this case, it's how will the motor power the spinning thing at the top of the mechanism to score the light show? So my solution was use a 90 degree gear to then spin a long axle, which is connected to this spinner at the top. The actual way you do the control can be very complicated, so I'm not going to discuss how to do it in this video. All right, that's it for this video. I hope that it helps demystify the art of making attachments. If you did enjoy the video or you learned something, leave a like on the video and a subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And comment down below what you learned or your favorite part of this video. Also, if you want me to help your FLL team either for the end of this season or for the next season, send me an email using this email address. Thank you and have a good one.